Hi everybody, it's Martha. Welcome back to my Shabby Craft Studio. Thank you ever so much for being here. This table is, uh, I mean the camera is going to jiggle. I'm sorry, I apologize. I have a brand new setup and I'm at a completely different desk. And my camera on my cell phone has decided that I can only record with my phone turned a certain way. Um, if I record with it the way I have from the beginning of time up till now, up till about two weeks ago, um, it's hard to explain. Say this is my cell phone, right? Say, say this is my cell phone. This is the top. This is the bottom. <laughs> and my uh, sound, you know, my up and down volume thing is on the side and the click it off, close it, whatever is on this side. I've always filmed with my camera this way. So the top is on this side. Well, when I look at my video, it's fine. When I'm recording, it's fine. Everything's in the right orientation. But when I put it on YouTube, it's flipping it upside down. In YouTube, there's some hidden code that you can um, put in <laughs> if you can go find it. But my laptop won't do the same thing that they're showing on videos of how to correct it on YouTube. They've taken the the flip it, flip the screen mode off and hidden it in a code somewhere on a hidden page. And when I follow the instructions, my computer won't. My my laptop's quite old and it's a Windows. So am I if I try to download my video to my um laptop. For some reason, there's some setting that I've clicked, obviously, that I can't get it to um, it, it gives sound and no picture. So kind of worthless as far as videoing, right? Sorry, I had a, a brain um, spot blank that going on there. So anyway, Welcome back. <laughs> Last week was a really busy week for me and I didn't get to do a video. So um, this is my wall hanging and I did put it together mostly in the direction um, or um, in the order that I laid the fabrics down, except um, I think from here down it's a little different and I think I'm going to add something on the end. However, and I did add this on top but, you know, I have to do some stitching. Um, so what I did was last night was really the first time that I got to really put any effort into this. I'm lowering my lights because they're shining right in my eyes and I don't like them. Shining in my eyes. Excuse me. <clears throat> Just ate lunch. All right. So hopefully that's light enough. Um, so what I did was I stitched the background... And I just, it, it's not, it's somewhere between a seed stitch and a running stitch. The running stitches are not consistent in size, as you can see. And they do go up and down. They all go one direction. <laughs> That's about as much as I can say. Then I took some of this silk scarf that I dyed, oh gosh, probably f six years ago? Five, four somewhere between four and six years ago. Can't remember if I did it here after we moved in this house or if I did this when we were still at the farm. But anyway, I took a, a sliver off of there and I put that on there because I thought it was really, really pretty. Um, there's the slightest touch of a pinkish peachy color here, but of course I covered it up. So uh, <laughs> you can't really tell, but that's why I thought it would blend in well. And I just did a... Uh, what's that called? Couching stitch over the top of it. So basically you could probably pull this out because I don't think I caught it in any of the stitches, but who knows? So I did that last night and I thought I might do a little stitching today. However, I ordered something and this is the second time I have ordered from this shop and I should have written it down for you, but it might this is the card I got. It's very pretty. And her name is Amy. Thank you, Amy. I know you don't watch me, but um, 
I don't think there's a business card in here, but what I will do is I will write it down and I'm going to raise this up because you're too close now. Hold on. All right. Hopefully that works. So uh, her shop name is, and she doesn't have it on her label either, is Flashy May Designs. And I will write that down for you. And I should have pulled out what she sent to me previously. If I can find it, I will. Um, I did order this. So she always attaches a little, um, like this is a really pretty quilted piece. And now look, I'm working on blue, but I don't have any space really on my wall hanging for this. But we might have to find space. And she always ties it in a really pretty, some sort of lace or whatever, selvage kind of thing. So I have this to play with now. Thank you, Amy. And um, my friend, Robin. Hey, Robin. Hope you're feeling better. Hope your ankle gets stronger every day. Everybody needs to send Robin uh, wishes for her ankle to get stronger. She broke it a while back and uh, you know how that goes. So of course I'll keep this paper because it's brown and it's crinkly. Now look at this. This was two separate sets that I ordered and Robin ordered one of them. I think she ordered this, this one. Let me know, Robin. One is Seaside and good Lord, I'm not prepared for this at all. I'll have to write it down below, but Flashy May Designs is on um, Etsy and she is on Instagram and she posts on Instagram when she is going to post um, what she is selling. So let me get, <laughs> would you believe I can't find a piece of paper? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this is this is her name. It's Flashy May, and these are capital letters, uppercase letters. Design. Oops. Okay. So it's Flashy May Designs. Take a screenshot of that. Click, click, screenshot, or write it down. Stop the video, get a pen and paper, and write it down. Flashy May Designs. And she puts these um, sets up on her website, on her Etsy. And the last one I got was some blue. And so, yeah, I, I don't have enough fabric, you know, like if I were to zoom around and show you all the fabric I have, and that's only like half of it because the other half's in the basement. Look at how pretty this is. Oh my gosh, I love this. Can you see it? And that's just what she tied it with. And then there's this lovely textured, it's like velvet. Can you see the texture? And a little quilted piece of flower from a quilt. And some of this is vintage, some of it's not, but I don't care. I'm not all, I don't know if the camera's picking up this color. Let's see. Oh yeah, there it goes. Isn't this gorgeous? It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, and I'll do the same thing with this. Look at this lace. Ah, I want to cry. It's so pretty. And that's a nice, nice long piece there, about a foot long. And then this is a really, I don't think the camera's going to pick this up. Um, here, this is lighter. This is like a, a um, sea foam collar. It's a very pale greenish blue. It's so and then there's this beautiful piece. Look at that. Oh, this old quilt. I mean, this quilt just, I can't get over how soft and beautiful. And, you know, yeah. Okay. And then there's this beautiful fabric. Wouldn't that make a pretty journal cover? 
Some of this fabric is inspiring me to work on some journal covers. So I kind of feel like I'm getting a little of my enthusiasm back for working on stuff. Another one. Absolutely beautiful. And then this one, which is also beautiful. That, that would make a really pretty cover too. And I like the inside as much as I like the outside. Like that's the outside, that's the inside. And this is really pretty too. This is like a linen almost. And I could seam that and make a nice dish towel out of that. <laughs> oh yeah. This is just one kit. And here's some more of that fabric from the tie with the flowers on it. I'm used to the camera being on this end, so I have to get used to the camera being on this end. And I really love this. This would be a, a cute little... Oh, man. That'd make a cute little journal. Yep, so there's that one. And come back here. And she is so fast on shipping. Robin, who lives on the other coast, <laughs> the West Coast, got hers on Saturday, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think we ordered on Thursday. And she got hers on like Friday or Saturday. So yeah, there you go. This ribbon is really nice. It's kind of a satiny ribbon. But it's a really pretty green. Oh my gosh. Look at this stuff. Look at that. Hmm. <laughs> Some more of that color I really love. And these two kits really could be intertwined because the colors are very much alike. I mean, this is the same stuff as this, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, I couldn't resist because there were two kits of this. <laughs> But they're different kits. Look at this. This is part of a quilt. Look. Isn't that pretty? It's all, I'm trying to see. I don't know if this is hand embroidered. Or machine embroidered. I don't care. It's pretty. Oh, look. I had not opened this up, so I am enjoying this the same time you are. That's very pretty. And then this is so textured. This is what drew me to this kit. Look at the texture. Isn't that lovely? Oh my gosh. I don't know what this is. That side's almost coppery looking. In the, if you turn it in the light the right way. And then that side is too. So I guess it's the same on both sides. I hope the lights, the camera is picking that up. That's so gorgeous. Ooh. This is velvety. It's like upholstery fabric, but very, like a brushed corduroy maybe? Thin whale corduroy? Fuzzy and fun. Fuzzy and fun. That piece is gorgeous. And this is the same as this ribbon here that she tied it with. Look at this fringe. How fun is that going to be in slow stitching? Very cool. And this is some more upholstery fabric. So it's a little rough on the back, but it's lovely on the front. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, so if you're on Instagram, if you're not, go. <laughs> I love Instagram. Oh, this is interesting too. This is probably the right side up. Zooming in just a little. 
and then that's the wrong side. Okay, zoom you back out. And another piece. Oh man, nice stuff. I think this has wool in it. I can feel it. <laughs> I'm very sensitive. <laughs> that's pretty. Wouldn't that make a couple of gorgeous journal covers? Wowza. Very nice. Fun stuff. Oh yeah. And then this beautiful piece here of quilted fabric. Oh, I wish you could feel this. It's like squishy. It's squishy. So yeah, I am very happy with those kits. And they do very much go together. So yeah, I am very extremely happy with that. Floshy made designs. I will try to link the Instagram below and I will definitely put her name below. Um, I'll link the Instagram and the Etsy shop. So if you're interested in any fabrics, slow stitch um, fabrics, cover fabrics, watch her. She announces it on Instagram. You got to jump on it. You, you have to jump on it because otherwise you'll miss out. <laughs> get these over here okay Ooh, big drop over there okay um I'm gonna bring this back and I'm just gonna work on it a little I'm debating on whether to do the flowers on screen bring it back down I could stitch the flowers on screen but it takes a lot of my concentration to do that and you might laugh at me, but this part is the part that I have the hardest time with. Um, yesterday, last night when I sat down with this, I, I was kind of a slug all day. I, I sat around a lot. Um, last week just took it out of me. I, I'm still tired. And then Evan hasn't been sleeping very well. So we're kind of all over the place with him. And that's tiring me out. Come on, get off me. <laughs> I have a silk thread. If you've never worked with silk, it's a pain. <laughs> it sticks to everything. Very staticky. Oh, the threads are impossible to get rid of. This is a piece of selvage that I had, and I knew I wanted to use it in this piece. All right, I've gone in 50 directions. Last night, I was going to take, I think it was this embroidery thread, which is 822. It's kind of a, I don't know. I don't know if you can see the color. All right. Um, I was going, it's actually the color that I used in here, but you can't tell. I mean, that's not white, white. This looks a lot darker than that, but when you separate the strands, it's not. So I was going to take that and just go all the way down, like a stripe here, a stripe in the middle, and a stripe on this side. But then I decided not to, because I don't know what else I'm going to do and I didn't want to cover up all of those stitches. But, you you know, even if I stitch here, I'm going to cover it up with something anyway. I mean, I might put... Uh, let me see if I got them here. I mean, I might put something like one of these on here. This one would be perfect. These hundreds of little snippets I made, never did much with. I could put one of those right there in the middle. Um... I could put a yo-yo in the middle. That's not them. <laughs> That's not yo-yos. Oh, no. <laughs> My yo-yos aren't where they belong. I could put buttons there. Sorry if that was really loud. Um, I have some blue and green buttons and clear buttons. I love the clear buttons. I could put buttons right there. You know, I don't know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna cover this with. So I gotta find my yo-yos too. See, I got blue buttons. I could put buttons all over here. I don't know. I don't know yet, and that's the part I struggle with. Do I stitch everything down with like a running stitch so that it's tacked down? Do I? I, I always double guess myself. Um, where oh where would my I'm still trying to pull together 
my stuff for um, doing this with. So, okay. Yo yo's. Yo yo's. Not yo yo's. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm still trying to find my yo yo's. I don't know what I did with my yo yo's. All right, so. Maybe what I'll do in this one, and, and then I'll release you from the pain, is I will show you how. There's one more of these. Oh, it's right here. All right. So I could take this fabric here, and I can show you how I learned to make the Suffolk puffs and the yo-yos. No, they're the same thing. Suffolk puff, puffs, yo-yos, and the hexagons. The hexagons are the ones that um, I don't make them traditional, um, but that's okay. You don't have to. Where's my needle book? Oh, I'm looking all over, and it's right here. Okay. So I don't know one needle from another really, unless the package I have tells me so. This is a long needle that I can fit usually two to three um, strands through the eye. It's not the longest needle I have. It's a nice size that I like to work with. Um, it's substantial enough for me to hang onto it with my pudgy little fingers. All right, so I have seen the yo-yo makers and I'm very tempted to get one, but for now, <laughs> I go around and I sort of fingernail press the edge up because we are going to stitch it and That's going to keep the raw edge inside. I've made some with the raw edge showing, and I don't like them at all. I wish I could find my bag of yo-yos. <sighs> it's upsetting when I'm not prepared. Okay. So what I do is, I knotted this, right? Yes. It's knotted. All right. I go up from the bottom kind of close to the fold I made. My hand is not liking me uh, stitching, I'll tell you that much. And you can make this the <laughs> stitch <laughs> stitches as far apart as you want. Um, it is going to have an effect when you gather it, how you know tight that gather is going to be. On the bigger ones, I like to do a bigger gather. Oh my gosh. And like, I'm no expert at this. I'm learning by watching other people. So this is this is what I've learned. I have to tell you, since um, winter's not here anymore, uh, I have a very hard time <laughs> putting my hands and my arms on this mat. It is wool. I love the mat because I can take a pin or a needle out and stick it, you know, stick it there. And I know where it is. It's not rolling off if I pick it up. Um, the fabric doesn't fly off if you want to walk from room to room with fabric on it. <clears throat> and excuse my sniffing. I have allergies and... The humidity is back, so I am struggling. When it was dry, I did not struggle as much. But the pollen this year, holy crap. Well, pollen is out of control. At least here in Virginia. Now, that being said, it's been cool enough. We haven't had any cicadas down this way. I'm not sure why. Because this house is, I think, older than 17 years. Maybe not. If it's not older than 17 years, that's probably why we don't have any blooming here because, um, you know, the ground was dug up when they last went underground to do their thing. 
But in Northern Virginia, there are cicadas swarming everywhere. So yeah, they can keep them. I don't like flying bugs. I don't like bugs in general. Okay, so there's my beginning knot. Nope. <laughs> there's my beginning knot. So I'm going to go back out and back in just before that knot. And I'm going to gently work the ruffle around that way or the gathering. See, and I can stick my needle there. And I'm holding the thread here. I hope you can see that. So I hope you're stitching something along with me. And I would love to see it if you're doing a little wall hanging of some sort. Um, I don't have any hashtags or anything. There. Now see, I could pull that tighter. That could be much tighter, but I don't want it tighter. And you can use it this way, or you can use it this way. You can stuff things in there. Um, you could put other fabric in there, like a dark blue or a bright yellow or anything you want. You can do, um, French knots in there. So what I do is when it's where I want it to be, I hold on tight, I go back out, and I go back in. And I didn't mean to pull that thread tight, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I just do a teensy tiny knot there. Then I pull my thread that way and trim. Being careful not to trim the fabric. Now there's a Suffolk puff with the folded under edge. So much neater than if you leave that edge raw. And then the other thing that I do now again, that's called a Suffolk puff or a yo-yo. And there are yo-yo makers that I've seen people use and they go really fast, but I just don't, I don't know. I haven't invested the money. I should. The hardest part for me is cutting out the circles. <laughs> All right, that's not the way I want that to go. I want, now I've learned that if I want the color, now this one I might just put on like that because I really like the flowers. So maybe I'll use this one. And what I would do is any color that I want to be prominent, I put on my right. And I'll show you. I don't know if it'll make much difference on this one. Fold it in half so you have a crease, right? And I fold this edge up so it's just over the edge of the crease. And I try to get, yeah. I try to get the center. So if you have to, you can fold it this way too. And just put a little crease at the top there, like, like right there. So you fold this up and you wanna get your thread as close to the center as possible. I'm usually really good at eyeballing it, but not too close to that edge because you're, depending on your fabric, it can fray really easy. Okay, come over here, Martha. And then what I would do is where this fold is, where this fold is, right here, I'm going to go in with the needle and make sure you don't get that uh, cut edge because it will come right out of there and pull. And that pulls that corner to the center. And then I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to do right there. going to pull it so it pulls right towards the center and this is what you're looking for kind of a, a curve here with these two sides going out 
And then you're just going to keep doing that. And in the end, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for this edge, this cut edge right here, this cut edge right here, to not overlap the folded edge here. And then you pull it, and you press it down. And then I'm just going to take my needle right here, through. Ooh, <laughs> that wasn't right. How'd that happen? There we go. And then I go back as close as I can to that hole and still get it on this edge right there. And then I, I'm trying to stay on camera. And then I go through that way and catch it to make my knot and then one more because I don't want it to come undone whoa uh oh oh no please don't do that okay and then I just go through and I cut the thread on this side so now we have this side which looks like you know a regular hexagon once you've folded all the edges in and then you have this side so you could really use either side up so that's how I do the Suffolk puff yo-yo and that's how I do the hexagon and it comes out in a nice neat little hexagon so as long as you cut your circle round and you kind of gather it the right way looks very pretty so um I don't know I don't know if you want to see me stitch <laughs> are we stitching together I don't know put my thread over there I do have a thread jar that I'm collecting threads in so I try to remember to put them in there instead of um zoom you out lift you up this is my thread jar oops that's my thread jar it's a rice jar brown brown and wild rice okay sir sure. I hope this uploads in the right direction it took me probably over two days five or six hours to literally figure out oh sorry um, what to do to get that two, not one, two videos to get them to um, not be upside down when they loaded. Oh my goodness gracious me. I was so frustrated. Last week was my birthday week. So... I had a very good week, I might say. Tony and I had Red Lobster on Tuesday. Wednesday was my birthday. I'm trying to count strands here. One, two, three, four. I guess I took two strands out of this. Okay. So, so uh, we... We were out anyway, so we ordered Red Lobster so we didn't have to go out Wednesday, which was my actual birthday. And then, and I always get the grilled shrimp. And then, uh, Thursday, I went to lunch inside a restaurant for the first time in well over a year. And met a friend who I used to work with and she just retired 
and we had such a good time. Okay. So this is what I did on the flowers on my other uh, project. And when I go down, I try and come back up. If it just saves thread, I'm a cheapo. Ow. I'm a cheapo, so I'm not sure I can get some of these threads anymore because they're ancient. And I am a cheapo. So, there's that. So if I go down, I try to come up the same place. Rachel reminded me of that. It's a good way to consolidate thread. My eyes are not happy right now. Where is that coming from? Oh, that's where that's coming from. <laughs> Get back in there. So I hope this finds everybody doing well. And I hope everyone is getting out and about a little more, especially if you're vaccinated. And that you are meeting with family or friends. I mean, I just had such a good time with my friend. It was really lovely. Okay, so now I'm going to go up into this other part of the flower. My eyes are watering. I'm struggling today. <laughs> and the sun is going in and out. So I'm sure that's showing on the camera somehow. Yeah, so poor Evan. He's getting old. And he is struggling a bit at night and he's been waking me up two or three times a night and then I have a um, salt lamp in my room and he has gotten to the point where he gets a little disoriented and he uh, like seems discombobulated almost um, and once I turn the salt lamp on, which is like a little nightlight, it's dimmable. Um, it sits on the table next to my bed, my side of the bed. And once I turn that on, he goes right back to sleep. And some nights I can turn it back off, and some nights I can't. He will wake up and keep, you know, like almost falling off the bed. Now, mind you, I have a king size bed, but somehow he manages <laughs> to almost fall off. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle. Um, and then most mornings he wakes me up between 4.15 and 5.15. And some mornings we can wait to go outside. And some mornings he's got to go out right away. So, you know, older dogs, they need a lot more specialized care. And so it gets a little tiring. <laughs> I might say, did I just undo what I did there? We Okay. So, yeah, I've been uh, dealing with that. And if I don't get, and plus my nose is really stuffed from the allergies. If I don't get a good night's sleep, I tend to be a little on the cranky side. And today is one of those days. I'm a little cranky. I must admit. And what I'll do is I won't do this all on camera, of course, but, oops, but I like this type of flower to embroider on because you can do it in different shades of blue and it comes out really pretty. Like I know the center, or not center, but this side of the petals is more white but this light blue shows up better. And then I'll put dark, a darker blue, you know, like a medium blue in here. And then I go over the top of it. See these, these blue lines here, the darker blue lines? I go over the top of that with an even darker blue. And it comes out quite pretty. It looks quite layered. But you have to do each of these petals pretty much separately um, because 
that's the only way they really come out looking like flowers. Otherwise, it looks like a bunch of stitches piled on top of each other. So, there's that one. Oops. Let go, please. Thank you. So, I hope you're working on something small, either a small wall hanging or, uh, you know, Whatever you would like, maybe it's going to be a cover topper for a journal. Uh, oops, oh, there goes one piece. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I guess I lost the pin out of that one. Oh, I know what happened. I had that circle on there, and that was the pin that was holding this piece on. Yeah, and all I did, instead of basting, all I did was take these little silk pins, and I put those on there. Sorry, itch. Had an itch. All right, let's see. So what I'll do is I'll finish these flowers, and I will um, I'll put a picture at the end of what they look like when they're done. I'll put a couple close-up pictures, and let you see them. Let me know below if you've decided to make a wall hanging or something, something small does not have to be long like this one. Um, it can be rectangular or square. It can be a, you know, a book topper. It can be small and be a book topper of some sort. Just something to get you going with doing a little stitching. Maybe next time when I get down here, we can do like a different stitch of some sort. Ow! <laughs> Oh, my finger. Maybe something out of the book. Um, and we'll just we'll just play. Now see this is really close to the edge of that backing fabric. I did trim the edges of this this top fabric. I did trim it a little bit, but I guess I might not have got close enough. But see this this thread here has many um, variations in it of the blues. And I think what I'll do is use those. I'll just keep pulling pieces off and using the parts that have the color depth that I want for each section. So I think I will close here. And this was just a check-in and a share and a little bit of, hey, let's get started on this. So I think maybe I'll do this one too. I don't know if it's going to, it won't look like two separate petals, which it is. But, you know, you got to do kind of, it's hard when you're stitching over this to really get it quite as detailed, I think. At least for me it is. And if you were doing the um, uh, Journal to Inspire project, I hope you had fun with it, and I hope you finished it, and I apologize again for dropping out of it. Um, there was just so much going on. I do want those of you that knew about uh, Tony's back to know that he is doing some better, which is why I can feel like I have time and energy to work on a project. So I appreciate all the good thoughts that everybody sent for him when he was hurting. Um, he's not 100%. And basically what happened was um, the pinched nerve <laughs> did a lot more slowing him down than the degenerative disc disease. So, uh, yeah, that was interesting. And that is still healing. So things are going to change um, about how we do things and everything. Now see, isn't that pretty? Look at look at that little bit of depth there and there and there. And then I'll do these with a middle shade and these with another shade and then go over the blue, dark blue with the dark blue. So let me know what you're working on. And if you have an Instagram or a YouTube, let me know. And I'll go check you out. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Um, Memorial Day is coming up. If I don't see you before that, 
take care and be careful out there. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. I love everybody. I love you all. And happy crafting. Bye.